welcome to the Worship Ministry Training Podcast. My name is Alex and Fiegen. I'm so glad you are tuning in today. This podcast is for worship leaders and worship team members who want to improve in your craft and calling. And if you are a new listener, welcome. I want to encourage you to hit the subscribe button, whether you're watching on YouTube or listening to the podcast in your favorite podcast app. Why? Because every single month you will get a helpful, practical, in-depth, topical teaching on worship ministry and how to improve your worship ministry. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future episodes. Also, if you're a new listener, check out all the past episodes from the last eight years. I want to encourage you, we've done tons of topics, tons of content, all for free. So check out the content library and just scroll back in time. Uh, hit any episodes that you want to listen to that will help you in this season of your ministry. And if you are someone who is really hungry to grow and you desire to grow as a worship leader, I'm going to point you to the Worship Ministry Training Academy. What is the Academy? It is basically a community filled with everything you need to build a thriving worship ministry. Literally everything. We have 10 in-depth courses on topics like set building, team building, group communication, uh, administrative systems. So we have courses, we have live monthly trainings on topics like wise boundaries in ministry, because all these pastors are failing and falling. Um, so monthly uh, workshops, we have uh, team resource documents, we have team discipleship material for your worship team. So check out the Academy. It is $1 to try for 15 days, you get full access to play around for $1. And then after that, uh, it's just $29 a month. And that's full access to everything. Literally, we have uh, team member training materials for you. We have an onboarding process that's already done for you. We have a an audition process that's already done for you. So it's it's literally like if you need help in your ministry, this is the resource that you need. So uh, go to worshipministrytraining.com to check that out and to start your trial. Uh, and I hope to see you inside of the academy. Part of the academy is we do uh, live interviews with experts. So different worship leaders that you've probably heard of. Recently, we've had Andy Rozier on from Vertical Worship, and Andy uh, did a Q&A session. And so this month, instead of giving you one podcast episode, I'm going to be giving you three podcast episodes. We're going to be breaking up the questions into single episodes. And in this second episode, our Academy member is asking, how does she talk to a team member who is doing something that is actually not helping the worship experience, like regularly doing the same Thing that's actually a distraction. How does she have that conversation with that team member? And so Andy and I give her some advice. So let's check out this Q&A and then I'll talk to you at the end. I, I had a question. We have one, one guy on our team. He sings and he plays acoustic. And he like every, every single time he leads a song, like he's got something to say. He's got like a little sermon. He's got a little story. And it's always like at the start of the song or right before the bridge. And I'm fine. Like if it's God, I'm fine with it. But I go by like, if God stops talking, you should too. And mm -hmm. sometimes it just, it just feels like he's just talking. It doesn't feel like it's from god <laughs> how oh, do wow. i yeah. handle that <laughs> well um, andy <laughs> um i mean my my first question would be who is his authority um i mean i don't i'm the worst the, i'm the worship pastor and then the pastors love us so me <laughs> okay I don't know if that's a trick question <laughs> is any, no it's not a trick question no trick questions i promise um it's <laughs> is um so so he he re kind of he's a volunteer mm -hmm. and he reports to you basically he's uh, he's underneath your your care yes. in the ministry right back to what i just said before i think you kind of have to firstly just to serve yourself you have to call it what it is okay that's the first thing you have to do or else you'll never be able to 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 help the guy <laughs> unless you are actually kind of like sometimes he says things and they're like really helpful, but other times I can tell this is kind of your shtick. It's your thing, you know, where you, you want to kind of say something beforehand and what's actually killing it is not what's actually, um, where the kind of like, where it's, it's rubbing a little bit for you is the repetitiveness of it. You yeah. Know? Not the fact that like once every two months he kind of has something to say and it's just kind of like, oh, that was great. You know, 
that you're saying kind of every time he sings a song, there's like mm-hmm. something. So what happens is you just kind of like becomes kind of a bit of the dripping tap where it's just kind of like, now we know that something's going to be said. And my disposition is always, as I'm sure yours is, is to kind of give the person the benefit of the doubt where they might not realize how much it's, how repetitive it is. They might not realize um, that it's losing its impact, mm-hmm. you know, because of the repetitiveness. Um, and, 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 you know, we don't want to assume everybody's just trying to kind of like manipulate space and, you know, right. So, um, and then it transitions, it moves across the road, unfortunately to you, <laughs> which is why I asked that question. Mm. I once had the saying, leadership, good leadership is letting people down at a rate that they can handle. Mm. I don't believe in auditions um, unless you're willing to tell someone they can't sing. You know, I don't believe in auditioning a drummer unless I can tell him, hey, you can't play on the click. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I don't like. I, I don't believe in auditions of a musician unless I can tell them, um, actually, you're not very good at what you do, you know, and um, because if we can't be um, lovingly constructive um, to people, then it doesn't serve them at all. It doesn't serve them, doesn't serve the body. And so doing a little kind of study on this guy, maybe you know him really well already, but like kind of finding it, maybe kind of praying over kind of like what would be the way that he would receive a word from me the best is, is, is pit stop number one, you know? And then number two is kind of like sitting him down, not alone with just with you and him, but maybe with, someone else on the team that you trust and just being like hey you know i love the things that you're saying but the repetitiveness of it is losing its value in the room and and so i you know um you know i'm the authority you know and my authority is not is to hold my hands like this not hold my hands like this over you you know but to hold my hands like this and I'm not just serving you, but I'm serving the whole congregation. That's what I was employed to do. That's the position that I was put in, in the ministry. And so I have to see the whole thing. And because of that, I have to make small decisions about some of the smaller things. And one of them is I, is that um, I love that you tell a story before you sing a song or say something, but I'm cutting it down to once every eight weeks, you know, and then kind of allowing him to be kind of like, you know, this is where leadership is kind of like, you know, we join the, you don't join the army to make friends. You join the army to go to war. And the war that we're fighting is on behalf of the king. And, and it sometimes means kind of like, you know, telling the troops to fall in line a little bit, you know, because we're trying to, we're trying to make a united front. Um, and, and that's a really hard thing to do um, in leadership, but it's probably required in that moment, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and as much as you want, last thing I'll say is as much as you want to carefully approach it with him, it's really important that he walks out knowing exactly what you are asking him to do. Yeah, without it being kind of vague. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. I think, you know, I have a tendency, I'm very, I'm not afraid of telling people what needs to happen and giving clear direction. Um, I tend to go about it um, much more like inquisitively by like asking questions and then uh, like hey you know i noticed that it's always like i noticed this 
I'm starting to sense this. So for example, in your context, like, hey, I noticed that every time you lead, you say something. I've I have a sense that the congregation, it's kind of becoming routine for them and everything in life can become routine. And when it does, people check out. And are you sensing that? Because I think I'm sensing that. um, And I'm seeing that in the body. And, you know, I'm going to suggest that we cut that back to, you know, once a month. Um, Are you okay with that? And I kind of do it like more like open and but clear, but then at the very end, if I need to come around and be like, hey, listen, like, I just need you to trust me in this. Like, I really think we need to do once a month or once, a, you know, once every eight weeks. The way that Andy did it is there was a little part in what Andy was sharing that it makes me uncomfortable, but it's actually right. Like when he said, uh, when you, basically, Andy, you said like, this is the way it's going to be. Yeah. And I, I'm like so afraid to do that to people, but I know that's my problem, not an actual problem. Um, and oh, yeah. I think, I think lately I've been learning that like, it's okay for the leader to say, this is how it is. Just go with it, get in line. And the, and people's feelings are a little bit hurt and they maybe complain to their friends for three weeks and then they get over it and it's fine. So, um, I haven't done much of the thing that the way that Andy described it, but I want to get better at that because sometimes you kind of need to let people feel a, a little bit of a sting However, like I said, I've never done it in the past, so I'm too. Uh, I mean, I'm the same, dude. I'm. I like. I, I hate confrontation. I hate it. Yeah. yeah. But like, but it's part of leadership. It's it's just kind of part of the package. Is what you sign up for. You can't you can't be a great leader unless you're willing to confront. And I love what Alex said. You know, and in the sitting here between the two of us, you know, just talking, like. As iron sharpens iron, one man sharpens another. Alex, you would do a much better job at it than I would because I'm maybe a little too kind of like direct. But the one thing I would push back on is like, don't ask him at the end of the, the thing, are you okay with that? Right. I don't, you know, as a leader, you kind of have to be like, I know that you're not okay with it. That's why you were doing it. You know, like, you're okay with talking before every song and I'm not. So like, yeah. so, um, and I think pastorally, like the thing that I have to remember is that when you tell someone something, um, if they're a very high emotive person, they feel like you're telling them that they're a bad person. You know, if you go up to a vocalist who's very emotive and tell them, hey, why don't you sing that harmony instead of that harmony? They sit there thinking, he thinks that I'm bad at, at harmony. Therefore, he thinks I'm a bad person. You know, uh, because that's how like the, the kind of the emotive person thinks. I've got some of that as well inside of me. And like when people critique my songs, I'm like, they they hate me. That's what they're saying. You know, even though that's madness, it's complete madness. Yeah. But like, um. And so to kind of like write a few notes down, you know, in pre- preparation for a meeting where you can kind of remove the, I'm not attacking you. I'm, that's why I said, just look at the, say to them like, hey, I'm looking at the big picture here. You don't have to look at the big picture, but I'm looking at the big picture. And that's why I get to make some little um, changes to a number of different things. And this one is part of it. Yeah. And I agree with you, Andy. What you said, oh, your pushback against me, I submit to you, and I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Uh, so good. Um, it reminded me of one of your podcasts. I don't, I don't remember who you were interviewing, but he said, like, when you tell somebody, you know, when you critique somebody, you're like, I'm not saying that you suck because you're still on the schedule. Like, you would mm, be yeah. on the team if you sucked. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Absolutely. Like, I believe in you. Like, you're, you're, I'm just, you're great in all of these areas. I'm just asking you to tweak this one thing, you know, and trying to like reaffirm your love for them, but say, like, I'm just asking you to change this. Like, I have a guy that, um, and some things you need to know when to let go. Like Andy said at the beginning, um, in terms of re- leadership is letting people down at a rate that they can tolerate. One guy that he's, one of my vocalists and harmony singers and he 
sometimes like at the end of songs, like he just his dynamic is wrong. Like he's singing hard when it's like a down chorus and it's supposed to be gentle. And it's like sometimes I'm like, I gotta tell him that. And sometimes I'm like, I'm gonna wait. And then like last night he did it again. And I'm like, should I tell him? And I was like, literally the only person who probably thought of it is me. Like it didn't affect the body at that point. Like it didn't interrupt their worship. It didn't distract them. It's just a preference thing on my end. It's a growth area for him. And because it's not becoming a distraction to the body, I'm like, it's not necessary to like always critique him after every single time he sings, you know? So you kind of let some things go. And then when it comes up in a more, you know, prominent fashion, you're like, okay, I need to address it because now it is starting to affect the, the flow of worship or whatever. You know what I mean? So uh, it sounds like this guy needs to have a talking to though. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Not like in a, yeah, you know, no. talking, but yeah. I just, I feel like sometimes like God's already using us through song and he thinks he's helping, but sometimes it just kind of cuts it off and like brings us back to the natural because he starts talking. Yeah. yeah. Generally as a worship, yeah, I mean, just moving away from, from him specifically. Um, I think it's healthy practice in worship leadership to monitor how much you're talking and I often wonder, do I need to talk because I picked the wrong song? Mm. You know, am I, am I talking because I'm trying to justify the song to be good? Now, where you hear this the most, guys, if, you, if you've been to a songwriting thing, uh, everybody writes songs for the whole day, and then they gather up, and then they say, now, you know, what this song is about is here's why we're saying this thing and and I that's sweet in the moment, right? I, I know that that I'm not actually critiquing them for that. What what I'm saying is that like I there's a part of me in the back of my head that I think you're not gonna get to do that on stage. The song's gonna have to stand up for itself. Mm. It's gonna have to be self explanatory. It's gonna have to be very, very clear enough for people to sing it back to God and, and, and it not be full of little things that you need to explain. Yeah. And so in the same way, uh, when I plan a set, um, I observe my own nature of whether I'm talking too much, um, or having to say something because without even realizing, maybe I picked the wrong song and I could have p picked a song that said what I'm trying to say better than the one that I picked, you know, and then I wouldn't have to set it up. And, and I did that to the point that like some weekends I, um, I will walk out on stage and basically besides just saying to everybody, Hey, good morning church. Let's worship God together. Like I'll run those songs without saying a word on the microphone. Okay. Mm. and just kind of allow there's nothing i can do to manipulate the spirit at all there is no power that i have over the spirit of god so so if i just run these four songs and let the songs speak and the spirit speak through the songs then it proves that like it doesn't need me just kind of like and here's another little bit of commentary that I want to give. And I do that probably like, I don't know, maybe four or five times during the year. Where once, you don't speak at all. Yeah. Once every yeah. 10, once every 10 weekends, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like there's a weekend that comes around and I'm like, I just, Andy, shut up. Just, just stop talking, you know, just like, and then, and then the following weekend, I'll just run a, I'll run a set with, with no, talking in it if i can you know if 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 i'm able to do that yeah do you but do you pray at the end of the set though oh yeah oh yeah we yeah. do like yeah. prayers and stuff but like but i'm talking about like the worship leader comments yeah you know I, the, the, yeah you know i rarely make those unless it's like at the top of the set um like when i'm welcoming the church just kind of set the set the table for them then I'll, you know, set the table, get their headspace in the right space, and then off to the races. I'll maybe like kind of pray sing in between like 
the end of one song outro into the intro of the next one kind of like mingle them together but not a lot of like now we're gonna stop and da 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 although i did introduce egypt yesterday uh i got to lead last night and um I introduced the song egypt by Corey asbury and uh i did say hey this is a brand new song it's about this i'm gonna teach you the chorus and now let's sing it so yeah, i did great. i did do yeah. that yeah, yeah for sure but um yeah how does that help monica that's that's really helpful that's some good stuff thank you all right well hopefully this episode was helpful to you and again i want to encourage you if you are serious about growing in your craft or if you just need help to strengthen your worship ministry check out the academy it is designed to give you everything you need to build a thriving worship ministry look you're busy you need to focus on leading your team and let us focus on helping you do that well we'll give you all the tools and everything you need to lead your team well. You focus on them, we'll equip you, and everybody wins. So check out worshipministrytraining.com to sign up for the Academy today. Hope to see you on the inside. God bless.